as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I greet us in the name of the Lord. My name is Brother Timothy Kidenji uh, from Crisco New Life Church. Thank you so much for your continuous uh, following on these teachings and messages in the Word of God. I believe the Lord is helping you and He continue to strengthen you and to bless you and even your family. Father, we thank you for your word today. As we share, Lord, I pray for proper utterance from heaven. I pray for grace, I pray for clarity, I pray for my viewers, Father, that they are going to hear from you, they are going to continue to understand, oh, my Father, God Almighty, the things of the Spirit, my Father, they need you to open our eyes to see and to understand what you're saying, oh, God Almighty, to the churches, oh, Lord, when you're sending Apostle John, you're telling him, go and speak to the churches and say, this is what I'm saying to the churches, Father, help us. That as we're hearing your voice, we are going to change. We are going to be blessed and taken to another level in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are continuing from where we left last time. And I've been speaking about how God's remnant people can come to a place of maturity, a place of perfection. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Maturity speaks about perfection. And if you read in the book of Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, it speaks about the elementary doctrine or the elementary level of a Christian life. Hallelujah. And Apostle Paul says there, or the writer of Hebrews says, that we need to move into maturity. We need to move into perfection. Leaving those elementary doctrine, we need to grow, grow in God. It takes time to grow. It takes the revelation to grow. It takes a vision to grow. I'll continue uh, uh, with the, talking about vision, that the Lord needs to open our eyes to see. Because where there's no vision, people perish. People cast off restraints. People cut off borders. But happy is he that keepeth the law. That is what the word of God says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, people will perish. I was saying that uh, people like Saul, King Saul, the first king of Israel, he was a disobedient person. He would be given a chance once in a while, and he was told to do the right thing. And particularly one thing he was doing wrong. He was told one time to go and destroy the Amalekites, the enemies of God. The Amalekites, remember, in the book of Numbers, they are the people that, are, that were killing the Israelites and they were, they were, they were attacking their weak, their, their weak, their weak people, their, the, weak, the weak people in their group. They were attacking them from the, from the edges and the Lord was so much uh, uh, displeased with the Amalekites. And he saw unto himself and said, I'm going to destroy the Amalekites from the history of the earth. And when Saul became a king, Prophet Samuel told him, it is the time you execute the judgment upon the Amalekites. And so when King Saul was sent there, he went and he was a half-hearted person. He was not fully committed. He was disobedient. He was, he was somehow carnal. He was telling Samuel that I have done all that you have told me to do. But then Samuel is asking, my ears can hear the breathing of sheep. And you're saying, these ones I, pre I brought to them that they can sacrifice to the Lord your God. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and Samuel was telling King Saul, you know the sin of rebellion is like witchcraft. Praise be to Jesus. It is like witchcraft. And God left King Saul until he, he would go and consult witches. He lost his vision. He lost his kingdom. His family blessing was lost completely. Praise be to Jesus. And also Esau, 
Esau was the, was the brother of Jacob, the two sons of the twins of, of, uh, of, of Isaac, the son of Abraham. And Esau sold his birthright. He despised. And if you read in the book of Hebrews, the word of God calls, uh, calls uh, uh, Esau a fornicator. He, was, uh, he, was beca he became a fornicator because he despised his birthright, he despised his inheritance. He could not see clearly the future. And the word of God says, when he sought it late alone with the tears, he could not find it. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. When you don't have a vision, you can perish like Esau. You can perish like Judas. Judas was walking with the Lord. Judas was an apostle. He was among the twelve. He was among the twelve that Jesus was sending to go and cast out the devils, to go and lay hands on the sick and they recover. And Judas was walking with the Lord until the last time when the, when the woman came and broke a very expensive uh, span card, broke that, broke that arabasta and broke it and the whole house was full of fragrance. And the word of God tells me in the book of John chapter 13 that when Judas saw, you know Apostle John was a young man, Apostle John is explaining very clearly here that it was not all the disciples that were indignant with Jesus or with the woman who broke their alabaster jar and the fragrance filled the whole room because anointing comes from broken things. Hallelujah. The sweetness of the anointing or the sweet smelling anointing comes when you are so much broken. The fragrance came and filled the entire room. The fragrance can come and fill an entire nation. It can come and fill an entire church when you have some few broken people, broken hearted people, crushed people. Oil comes from crushed things. Hallelujah. And when the woman crushed that jar, Judas was very, very angry. And he, and, and he told Jesus, we could have sold this pan card and sell it and give, it, give the money to the poor. And Apostle John says, not that he cared for the poor. He didn't have so much great concern for the poor. But the Bible says he was a thief because he was stealing from the, uh, from the, from the, from the bag. And Jesus is very long-suffering because he never crucified Judas because he was a thief. He persevered with him, persevered with him. And he was saying, one of you is going to betray me. One of you is going to betray me. He's the son of perdition. His heart is not right. Your heart has to be right all the time. Hallelujah. The heart of Judas was not right. He lost it. He lost his anointing. He lost the covenant of the blood. He lost the covenant of fellowship with the Lord, the covenant of light, and he walked out and went and made another covenant with the high priest and the leaders of the people. And the word of God tells me, immediately Judas went out, it was dark. That is what happens when you leave church. That is what happens when you, when you, when you stop following the work of God. When you stop following the covenant, the fellowship of believers. When you go out there, it is good, you know, it is going to be dark. Abide in the fellowship because in the fellowship there is light. Right. Praise be to Jesus. So Esau and Saul and Judas, they exchanged their blessing for selfish gains. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13 and verses 44, hallelujah, that we are, we are supposed to sell. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid and for joy over it goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. I don't think the owner of this field wanted to sell. Maybe this man was hired to go and do some digging there. Maybe the man was passing by and he saw a field with treasure. He discovered the treasure here and he went and sold everything and I believe he kept on, uh, kept on hiking the price. I'm just thinking in a natural way how that man was able to convince the seller of the field to sell it to him. Probably he doubled the price that was there uh, in the market at that time and was able to purchase the field with the treasure. That is a man who had a vision. We need a vision to be able to sell everything. 
Praise be to Jesus. To get the treasure with the field. Uh, 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 the field with the treasure. Oh, what a great deception it is to feel that we can, we can get God's best without paying, uh, uh, paying a spiritual or a material price. The disciples have to pay the price of losing all to find it back again in Christ. Or even a man like Elisha in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19 to 21, when Elijah came to him, Elijah was a prophet of God, and the Lord told him the time for your departure has come. And he told him, go and anoint a man called Elisha, the son of Shepherd. And he found him digging in the, in the digging or a prowling with, a, with an ox then. And the Bible says he went and he threw his mantle upon him. And Elisha left everything and followed him. That is called a vision. That is called a vision. Our eyes need to be open. Apostle Paul says in the book of Philippians chapter 3 verses 8. Mm. Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 to, to, to verse 9. Apostle Paul was seeing, he was seeing through the prophetic eyes when he says, I considered everything as done. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. He considered everything as done so that he can be able to get Christ Jesus. He was a, he was a scholar. He was very learned, educated at the feet of, 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 a, man, of a scholar called Gamaliel, but Apostle Paul was saying in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verses 8 and 9, uh, he says, Ye are doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I am served, I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may that I may win Christ. When he had this encounter on his way to Damascus as a persecutor of the church, he said, I considered all that I knew. I considered as dung as rubbish. I did not want to count every, anything that I had as variable compared to the revelation of Jesus Christ. And when he's talking about himself and even authenticating his, uh, his apostasy or his apostleship to the people who are doubting him, he was saying, he was saying, hallelujah, about his apostleship, I considered all things as done that I may obtain Christ, that I may obtain that I may get Christ Jesus and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but which is through the faith of Christ Jesus, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God shows us what we, what we love most is to be placed on the altar of God as a sacrifice. That means we have to give our best to God so that we can get his best from him. To come into God's abundant materially, abundant materially and spiritually, it is like Abraham. Abraham sacrificed his only son. Hallelujah. He was willing. He did not sacrifice him. He didn't kill him. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. He did not kill him, but he was willing to offer him. And God said, can you imagine? You put yourself in the shoes of Abraham. God tells Abraham, I'll give you a son in your old age. Finally, the son comes. And the son makes the home to become a, uh, to have laughter. In fact, they call the son laughter. They are laughing all through. Hallelujah. But then one day, God knocks on the door of Abraham's tent. And he says, you go and sacrifice your son, your only son. And when Abraham obeyed God, because he believed, when they were going with the two servants to the, to, to the, to the place of sacrifice, he told the two servants, you stay here. We are going there behold with the son. We are going yoda with the son. We are going to, uh, to worship and then we are going to come back. He did not say, I am going to come back. He said, we are coming back. Because of that, because of that, God saw unto himself, because he could not saw by anyone higher than himself. In the book of Hebrews, we hear that. He saw by himself. Hallelujah. Because when you're swearing, uh, when you're making an oath, it has to be between two people. And so God had no one else higher than himself. He said, I saw by myself. Hallelujah. 
I saw by myself in, in blessings, I'm going to bless you, Abraham. And all the nations of the world shall be blessed through you. Isn't it true today that all the nations of the world are blessed both, both naturally through the Jewish nation and the technology and the knowledge God has given them, but also spiritually now through the, the, the Messiah who came through the Abrahamic lineage, we, the nations of the world are blessed with the gospel of truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I saw to myself, I am going to bless you, Abraham. I'm going to bless the whole world through you. Abraham, this kind of work is calling for us to sacrifice our Isaacs upon the altar, upon the sacrifice of God, giving our best to him, our best time, or our, uh, 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 the best of our finances, the best of our resources to the kingdom of God. What we give up for God, for God's best comes back again multiplied many times in many, many forms and blessings that you cannot even understand. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. What you give to the Lord, it is going to come back again to you in many, many, many forms. It is not in vain to offer yourself to the Lord. I was saying in my last message that when you are walking in purity and holiness, you are going to attract serious blessings. You're going to attract many, many blessings. Apostle Peter was telling Jesus in Luke chapter 18, verse 28. He was telling the Lord, uh, uh, Peter was, and Peter said, See, we have left all and followed you. Peter was a family man. He left his fishing career and he followed the Lord. And one time he had, he had gotten a lot of fish. He had made a very big catch, but he left the tent. When he saw the miraculous, when he saw the supernatural, he said, this must be the Messiah. He left everything. And Jesus told him, Peter, you are not losing everything. I'm going to make you fishers of man. You are going to do a more valuable work. You are going to do a higher commission. You are, not, you are going to stop catching fish, roasting fish, and selling fish. Now I have a big assignment for you. Hallelujah. And Peter was saying here, we have left all and followed you. So he said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left houses, house or parents or brothers or a wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God. The Lord said, you are going to receive a hundredfold in this life and it's also going to add eternal life. Praise be to Jesus. Oh, that God may open your eyes to know the price you are supposed to place on the altar for the things of the kingdom, for entering into a place of maturity. Maybe the Lord is telling you to leave your country, go live in another country, and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go and help another nation. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Through your intercessory prayer. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, and verses 25, the word of God says, The fear of man brings us near, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. You can enter into many, many snares because of fearing people. What will people say if I go to full-time ministry? What will people say if I go to a mission? What will people say if I join the ministry? If I give my resources for the kingdom of God, for the purpose of God? What will people say? The fear of man is a snare. Hallelujah. But whosoever trusts in the Lord, the Bible says they shall be saved. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. First Peter chapter 5 and verses 6 to 7. Therefore, the word of God says, Harbor thyself under the might heart of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. It takes humility for your eyes to be open. It takes humility for, your, for you to have a vision in God. Remember, I'm speaking about vision. I'm speaking about God's remnant people coming to a place of maturity. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. Some see for years the deep things of God, but because of fear of criticism or of pride, they cannot make it upon the holy and simple road of humility. They cannot do that. 
Hallelujah. To get the mighty things of God. I say there is a higher mark in God. There are higher blessings. If you are settled for only the minor things of this life, you are not going anywhere with God. If you are settled for only temporal things, to just having a very good family, having a lot of money in the bank, and going to many vacations across the world, and eating well and drinking well and, and exercising, and this is all God you called me to do. And attending a church service for two, three hours only. If your life is carried by only that, then you, you, are, you are not going anywhere. It seems you are a blind person. You don't see the great things of God. You don't see the power of God. You don't see the sevenfold, as I spoke last time, of the Spirit of Christ Jesus, that you need to rise in wisdom. You need to rise in knowledge. You need to rise in understanding. You need to rise in righteousness, in justice, in purity. You need to have a vision of seeing the whole world delivered, delivered from the powers of darkness. You need to see nations coming to a place of understanding the knowledge and the, and the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. You are just a blind person. And a blind person was still if you are a blind of the blind. If you are a leader of the blind and you yourself are blind. May the Lord Jesus help us. People prefer to please kind of flesh and lose the best God has for them. Uh, hallelujah, which will prepare them for greater life of power with the God and with the man. Let us pay the price of maturity. Let us ask the Lord to help us to pay the price of entering into maturity, of entering into a higher level of maturity with the God. Let us be like Elisha. Elisha burnt the plow and he fed the people because he had a vision of the prophetic. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. He had a vision. He wanted that prophetic mantle that was with Elijah. And when he was asking for that mantle, he did not only simply ask for the mantle, but he asked for the double portion, double anointing. God is looking for people who are going to come to a place of double power, double anointing, double purity, double holiness, double experience with God, deep things of the Spirit. People who can walk across nations, doing miracles, signs, and wonders, healing all manner of sicknesses and diseases, curing sicknesses and diseases of all nature, of all manner. God is looking for people, sold out people, people who have a vision, whose eyes are open, whose eyes of their understanding, they are open as Apostle Paul would pray for the Ephesians. In the book of Ephesians, chapter, uh, chapter 1, Apostle Paul was praying for the Ephesian church, and he was praying and saying that the Lord God may open the eyes of your understanding, hallelujah, that the eyes of your understanding in Ephesians chapter, chapter, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 1 verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of glory of, the inherit, of his inheritance in the saint. They are what, there is something we call riches of glory. If you, you don't want the riches of glory, me, I want the riches of glory in Christ Jesus. I want my eyes to be open. I can make this my prayer every day until the eyes of my heart or the eyes of my mind being enlightened that I may know the hope of my calling, of the calling of Christ for me. And what, is, what are the riches of glory? They are riches of glory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah to the name of the Lord. God is calling a remnant. He is calling hungry people. He is calling committed people. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this message, O oh God. As this word is sinking into our hearts, help us, Father. Transform us from within that we are going to be a part of the remnant a part of a prepared people, a part of a prepared army of the end times that you're preparing across the nation, that you're preparing, Father, for the work of the ministry, preparing us, O oh God, to enter into perfection. Bless your people. Bless this family. Keep them, Lord. Heal the sick, O oh God Almighty. Provide for the needy and make a way where there seems to be no way. 
In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. God bless you. We continue with the teaching as the Spirit of God is helping us. Amen.